Okay, this is a uh, sample question, uh, example question from the final exam in the fall of 2015. It's a problem that involves the conservation of linear momentum. And uh, as shown in the figure, you can see there's a water jet, and the problem reads a curved nozzle is attached to a vertical pipe. At the flange, this is the flange here, so at station one, uh, the inside diameter of the pipe is 16 centimeters and the gauge pressure is 200 kilopascals. At the end of the nozzle, uh, here it's at station 2, at the end of the nozzle uh, it has an inside diameter of uh, 8 centimeters and water discharges to atmosphere at an angle of 30 degrees from horizontal. The flow rate of water, which we'll take to have a density of 98 kilograms per cubic meter, is uh, 0 0.1 cubic meters per second. And the, the nozzle fixture itself, the metal fixture, has a mass of 20 kilograms, and the water contained inside the nozzle has a volume of 15 liters. So we're going to have to include the weights of those two components as well and atmospheric pressure is 100 kilopascals. So there's two parts to this problem. One is to draw a free body diagram showing all the forces on the nozzle and you'll need that to solve the problem. The second part is to calculate just the vertical component, the Y component of the force at the flange, in other words at location 1, to hold the nozzle in place and you want to clearly indicate the direction of that force. So as I said, this problem involves the conservation of linear momentum for a control volume, which we'll call CV control volume. Because it's hard to draw on this tablet, I have pre-drawn the free body diagram here. So this is the so this is the free body diagram, and I've also shown uh, the control volume. So at station one here, we have the pressure at one times the area at one, that would be the force. At station two up here, we have the pressure at two times the area at two. So I'll label that as station two. And we have the weight of the nozzle, which we were told was uh, 20 kilograms, and we have the weight of the water. We have to figure out what the weight of 15 liters is, uh, which is pretty easy. Now we also have the atmospheric pressure, I'll we'll call it PATM times A. Now this would act around the complete uh, periphery of the control volume. <clears throat> and then on the free body diagram, we also put the forces that you're after. You want to find the anchor forces, so FY this is the anchor force in the y direction uh, required to hold the uh, nozzle in place. And although it's not asked, in, you don't ask to calculate it, there will be an x component. So these are the forces provided by the bolts uh, at the flange to hold the, uh, the nozzle in place. Now, let me talk about uh, this issue, the issue of the atmospheric pressure, that would be very difficult to handle that force uh, if you worked in absolute pressures. So the way we solve this problem is we work in gauge pressures and atmospheric pressure in gauge is zero. So this pressure goes away and that means that P1 and P2 have to be in gauge when you're doing this. So let me write that down. So P1 and P2 have to be in gauge pressure for you to get the right answer because otherwise you'd have to include the atmospheric pressure over the outside and that would be very difficult to uh, accomplish. So the principle of conservation of linear momentum is the sum of the forces on the control volume in a vector sense equals the sum of the rate of momentum out, so that's m dot v out, minus the sum of 
the momentum in m dot v in and here we're considering them in a vector sense now just a reminder you wouldn't have to write this for a test but this is really f equals m a for a control volume if we just consider the y direction then the sum of the forces in the y direction on the control volume if we just consider the y component then it would be m dot 2 v2 minus m dot 1 v1 now just a reminder here let me draw some axes in the x direction we usually describe the velocity in the x direction with a lowercase u and in the y direction we describe the velocity in the y direction with a lowercase v so what i have down here is m dot 2 v2 is the rate of momentum leaving the control volume in the y direction that's this term and m dot 1 v1 is the rate of momentum entering the control volume in the y direction. Now in this case it's a steady flow problem. Uh, there's no mass accumulating inside the control volume so we can write m dot 1 equals m dot 2 equals m dot and that allows us uh, to collect some terms. And so some of the forces in the y direction on the control volume equals m dot v2 minus v1. So now we can start a new page. So I've rewritten sort of what, where we got to on the last uh, page that the sum of the forces in the y direction equals m dot the y component of velocity uh, leaving minus the y component of velocity entering. So now, and I've also redrawn the free body diagram. So now if we apply this equation and we look at the sum of the forces in the y direction, just examining the uh, free body diagram, we have to include the anchor force, Fy, that's in the positive y direction, plus P1A1, that's the force uh, in the positive y direction as well. Now, P2A2 acts in the, the at least the, the uh, y component of it acts downward, so it acts in the it's a negative direction, so we have a negative here. P2A2 sine 30 degrees. Now, I should mention at this point, at the nozzle exit where the water exits, that the pressure at P2 would be also be uh, atmospheric pressure, so it would be zero gauge. Uh, but I wanted to include it in this problem in case in another problem, maybe in a problem where you have uh, an elbow fitting with two flanges, P2 may not be zero. So I wanted to include how to include the effects of a non-zero pressure at two. When we finally do the calculation, we're going to set P2 to zero. But I've included it here just to illustrate how you would handle a non-zero pressure at point two. Okay, so we've got Fy, we've got the two pressure forces. The weights of the nozzle and water act downward, they act in the negative y direction, so positive y is upwards, so this is minus W of the nozzle minus the weight of the water, the 15 liters that's in the uh, nozzle. And all that, according to our, our uh, equation here, has got to equal the mass flow rate times the y component of velocity at the exit minus the y component of velocity at the inlet. Now we can solve uh, for the thing that we're interested. This is our anchor force. It's our y direction anchor force. So solving for Fy
So we get Fy equals m dot v2 minus v1, then it's going to be minus p1a1 plus p2a2 sine theta. That term's going to go to zero, but I'm just including it here. And then, of course, you've got the positive weight of the nozzle and positive weight of the water. Now, at this point, what you want to do is you just want to look at this equation and, and check that it makes sense. So if you look at this term, this is acceleration term where water's coming in at a low velocity. And by the way, the exit diameter is half the, half the diameter of the inlet diameter. So we, well, I'll show in a, a little while, but this means that the area is going to be uh, four times less at the exit. So we're going to have four times the velocity. So water is being accelerated in the y direction. And so V2 is going to be greater than V1, and so we expect that uh, that will cause a, a positive Fy. You could imagine that if P1 increased, uh, it would require a negative Fy to uh, hold the nozzle in place, so that makes sense that that sign's negative here, so that makes sense. And similarly, if, if the pressure at 2 was increased, it would increase the value of Fy, and similarly the weights of the nozzle and the weights of the water, if you increase those, you could imagine Fy being more positive. So, so this, the signs make sense here. Okay, so let's move on to the next page. Now what I've done is I can select this equation and then copy it down. So that's what I've done. We have the equation that we had on the previous slide, Fy equals m dot v2 minus v1. The pressure force at 1 plus the pressure force at 2 in the y direction plus the weight of the nozzle plus the weight of the water. So now at this point you can start doing calculations. You can actually start putting some numbers in. And that's what I strongly recommend that you work in symbolic form. Uh, getting to this point is uh, you know, 70 or 80 percent of the intellectual input, and now, so now you've just got to be careful and uh, do the calculations correctly. So we've got the volume flow rate here of water of 0.1 cubic meters per second, so we can easily calculate the mass flow rate because it's the density of water times the volume flow rate, so that's water is 998 kilograms per cubic meter, and 0 0.1 cubic meters per second is the flow rate, so we get 99.8 kilograms per second. Now Q equals the volume flow rate equals V1A1, which equals V2A2. This is an incompressible flow. We have a constant density. So V1 equals Q divided by A1, so that's going to be Q divided by pi D1 squared divided by 4, which equals 4 times 0 0.1 cubic meters per second divided by pi, and then D1, we're told in the problem here, is 16 centimeters, 0 0.16 meters squared. And that works out to be 4.974 meters per second. And, oh, I should mention that these Vs, these capital Vs, that's of course the, the scalar velocity entering, and I'm going to call V2 is the scalar velocity exiting. If we want to get the Y component, in this case, the uh, this is equal to the y component of velocity entering there is no x component so v1 equals v1 which equals 4.974 meters per second similarly v2 equals q divided by a2 you can do it that same way another way to do it is to recognize from this equation here that we can just take V1 times A1 over A2, which is V1 D1 squared over D2 squared. So that equals 4 V1. So the velocity 
exiting is 4 times the velocity entering, and that works out to be, just multiply the 4.974 times 4, 19.89 meters per second. Now, that's the magnitude of the velocity exiting. It, it breaks up into two components. We would have v to the y component and u to the x component at the, at the exit. So v2, which is what we need for our force calculation, is v2, and then that's going to be the sine of 30 degrees, which equals 9.947 meters per second, because the sine of 30 degrees is a half. Now, I think we've got everything in this equation here except for the weight of the nozzle and the weight of the water. The weight of the nozzle is the mass of the nozzle times g. You're told in the problem statement that the mass of the nozzle is 20 kilograms. So 20 kilograms times 9.81 meters per second squared. That works out to be 196.2 newtons and then the weight of the the weight of the water is just uh, the gamma of the water which of course is equal to rho of the water times g so 998 times 9.81 so this is the weight per unit volume times the volume and you're told that that's 15 liters so the specific weight of the water, if you multiply uh, 998 times 9.81, you get 9790 newtons per cubic meter times a volume of 15 liters. And one uh, liter is 10 to the minus 3 of a cubic meter. Remember, a liter is 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters. So it's 15 times 10 to the minus 3 cubic meters. That's the volume of water and that weighs 146.8 newtons. So now we're almost there. We can uh, substitute the numbers in and calculate Fy. I'll go to the next page. I've Again, I've rewritten our, our equation for Fy here. It's m dot and then the y component of velocity at the exit minus the y component at the inlet minus P1A1 plus P2A2 sine 30 degrees and then the weights. So what we have here is Fy equals, now we calculated the mass flow rate as 99.8 kilograms per second. Now if we scroll back we can see the velocities Little v2 was 9.947, and uh, the y component of velocity at the inlet was 4.974. So we'll put those in. So 9.947 minus 4.974 meters per second. You can see it has the right units, kilograms meters per second squared, which is a, a newton. And then we have P1, the pressure at 1 is 200 kPa. Make sure you use gauge. You don't convert that to absolute. So that's 200. And don't forget the kilo. That's 10 to the 3. The area is pi times 0.16 squared divided by 4. So that's, that's this term here. Now, the pressure at 2, in this case, because the jet is discharging to atmosphere, the pressure at 2 is atmospheric pressure. So I'll make a note here that P2 equals 0 gauge. So that's, I'll add it on here, that's plus 0, that's the P2 term. And then you've got the weight of the nozzle and the weight of the water, which we calculated to be 196.2 newtons plus... 146.8 newtons. And when you calculate that out, uh, you get Fy equals to 496.3 newtons. That's the 
term because of the accelerating flow in the y direction minus four zero two one point two newtons that's the pressure force because of p1 and then you've got plus your your two weights 196.2 newtons plus 146.8 newtons and that when you add it all up equals minus 3180 newtons so what that tells you is we've assumed that the force was in the y direction positive y direction and a negative number indicates that the force is actually in the in the opposite direction it's actually in the negative y direction so you can see that the that's because the pressure force is the dominant effect the bolts are in tension because of the pressure force at the uh, flange so you can leave it there or you can write it this way that fy equals 3180 newtons and indicate an arrow in the downward direction. And that is the answer to this exam problem. Now, I thought I'd add just a bonus here. What if the problem had asked for fx? It's actually a very simple calculation and probably the reason it wasn't included on the exam. But I'll just, for completeness, I'll finish it off. So I've drawn over here again the uh, free body diagram. So in this case, we just say the sum of the forces on the control volume in the x direction. But then this would be m dot u out minus u in. And the flow entering the uh, nozzle enters with no x component, so u1 equals 0. You can see that. There's no x component of velocity at the inlet, so that just equals m dot u2. And so now we can apply this, some of the forces in the x direction we can include the anchor force fx is what we're after that's the uh, the shear force that the bolts apply to the uh, nozzle in order to hold the the nozzle in place so fx now the x component of the pressure force p2a2 that would be in the negative x direction and that would be cos of 30 degrees now in this case p20 but i'm just including it so in this case, this is zero gauge, but I'm including it in this calculation in order to show you how to do it if it was non-zero, and that equals m dot u2. Now, let me just draw over here on the uh, on the problem diagram again. We have we know v2 here, and it would be broken up into two components v2 and u2 so u2 would equal the magnitude of velocity at the exit uh, times the cos of 30 degrees and we had previously that v2 equals 19.89 meters per second so we can do the final calculation fx equals the mass flow rate which was 99.8 kilograms per second and then uh, u2 which is 19.89 meters per second times the cos of 30 degrees and that works out to be a positive number 1720 newtons uh, so that means the force is to the right. And that is the answer, of course, that wasn't asked for. And that completes this solution.